is how um, not um, normal, I don't know how to say it, it's not what we expected, we expected either a, a, a tefillah of tzara or a tefillah of tshuva, and there were neither, it was a tshuva of geula, it was a tshuva of, of being saved. And we saw the different uh, opinions of how that works in. And at the end of the day, what we said is Hashem, um, in a sense, Hashem doesn't give up on Yonah. That's really what's happening in this chapter. And that's what Yonah recognizes. Recognizes that Hashem isn't giving up on him. That's really the, the, the chidush of Perek Bet. Um, we tied it into Yom Kippur, of course, how it's connected to Yom Kippur. This idea of man tries to run away from God from two aspects. One is from his job, what he's supposed to do in this world. And sometimes he runs away from the actual kirvat Hashem, being close to Hashem. He says, I want away from you. And Yonah, who tries to get away from both of these things, at the end of the day, uh, is, is, sees that that doesn't work. That, doesn't, uh, that, that kind of relationship doesn't work. What is going to work or not work, we're going to see now as we do a restart to the whole sefer and start again. As we said, it's take two. There's take two. Exactly. Aleph, bet, didn't work, nothing worked, everything was off. Yonah understands that he cannot, cannot uh, run away from Hashem, he cannot run away from his job. Now he's going to come back. But that doesn't mean he has to like it. Okay, and that's sort of the backdrop of everything we're going to be dealing with in these next two chapters. He's going to do his job. It doesn't mean he has to like it. But as opposed to Perek, um, to Perek uh, Aleph and Bet, where Hashem tells him to go to an invev, the Kroa Lea Kriya, right? He says, Kum Lech Ninvei Yigel Krai Lea, Kialtar Atam Lefanai. We don't know what he's supposed to say. And we saw how the Malbim explained that, that sort of explains how it wasn't a Kovesh it wasn't a prophet who holds in his prophecy because he didn't, wasn't given a specific prophecy. Um, but that's it. Yonah doesn't talk to Hashem. Yonah doesn't argue with Hashem. Yonah doesn't, uh, he, he doesn't say anything to Hashem. He has no connection to Hashem afterwards until he gets in the, in the fish. And he said the three days, three days, right, with a female fish, the male fish. Then he, 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 he prays to Hashem, but Hashem doesn't answer him. And Hashem doesn't answer. This is important for our next move here. Hashem doesn't answer him. Hashem says, one, one second, pal. You get back on track, and then we'll talk. In other words, Hashem is stern in that sense. He says, listen, I'm not letting you go anywhere, and you can't run away from me. He talked about uh, sort of a parent to a child. And I was like, look at me when I'm talking to you. You can't. But, but we're, not, we're not even. We're not equals here. We're not, okay, now let's talk. No, 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 no. Now do your job. Then we'll talk. And then Perak Dalid will have this discussion between Yonah and Hashem. Suddenly there, we'll see a lot of talking between Yonah and Hashem. Yonah's going to say something, Hashem's going to answer him. Yonah's going to say something, Hashem's going to answer him. It goes back and forth. Uh, then suddenly it's like a whole new relationship. But then it's already a more uh, mature relationship in that they're already talking. Okay, and that's already a strong development in understanding what, how well, we deal with Hashem. And at first, if there's a more, I'll call it a juvenile in a sense, again, not to say Yonah is juvenile, but to say that the, the relationship Yonah is forming with Hashem is more juvenile. I'm running away, I don't want to talk, I'm going, I want to die. All these statements, he's going to say I want to die also in chapter 4, but not in this kind of uh, actual suicide that he does in chapter 2, or chapter 1. Um, but it's a more juvenile relationship to Hashem. In Perek Dalet, we're going to see a much more Boger one, even though it's not one that, a Boger means a mature one, but, but even though he's not accepting Hashem in any way, shape, or form, he's very angry at what's going on there. But that we'll see in chapter 4. Now, let's go into chapter 3, which is Makabil to chapter 1. Okay, no, again, we're starting again. Chapter Gimel, Perek Gimel is really... The storylines. There are two stories. There's chapter one and chapter three, and then there's discussions, either a prayer in chapter two, or a discussion. <laughs> you giving us background music, or a discussion. Put the phone down, man. You'll you'll figure out your aliyah later. Okay, the seder, yeah. And why? We we probably don't have an answer for this, but why doesn't Hashem give up on Yonah? He could get another navi. He needs to deal with all Hashem, this. It's... Hashem doesn't give up on on his prophets. It doesn't. I mean, that's, that's the ikar of the, of the book, possibly. Yeah. And Hashem doesn't give up on man. I mean, he doesn't give up on man. He doesn't give up on man. He doesn't give up on Ninveh either. That's what he's doing. He doesn't give up. Even when he punishes it, he doesn't give up. Now, 
we're going to see the difference between the Goyim and Amisel. There is a difference here that's going to maybe one of the important lessons we'll learn here, Dafka in chapter, chapter 3. Um, but let's take a look, okay? Let's read it together. Okay, just to remember what's going on here. Yala. Vahi dvar Adunai Edyona Shenit Lemo. Right? Read it. Ramash, take two. Hashem speaks to Yonah again, saying, Shenit. Secondly, again, uh, again, really. Kum lechen ninvea ira gdula. Ukra elea et a kriya shera no chido verelecha. Again, really much sounds a lot. I say the, the, the cry that I told you. Um, Ve'akom yuna, ve'yelech et ninvei kidvar Adonai. Right, so up until here it seems good. Ve'ninvei ha'ita ir gdola le'elohim. Ma'alach shloshet yamim. Ninvei was a great city to God. Ma'alach shloshet yamim. It's fascinating how you design what it means by ir gdola le'elohim, what exactly that means. Um, we'll see what the, what, the, uh, uh, what the possibilities are for that. Um... Vayachel Yona, lavo ba'ir ma'alach yom echad. So Yona walks into the city. We just said, how big is the city? Three days. A three-day walk, whatever that means. You know, it may be that long, it may be that wide. In other words, to get to the whole city, apparently, you need three days. I'm not exactly sure how to do this ge- geom- 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 geometrically. Yeah, I'm not sure exactly how to do it. But somehow, it, takes, it will take three days to cover the whole city. Yona goes in one day. Yona begins to go into the city one day. In 40 days, Ninveh will be a very strange word. Nehepachet will be turned over. Over Afuch, yeah, from the word Afuch. Yeah, Nehepachet from the word Afuch. It will be flipped, turned. Interesting, interesting term. It doesn't say it's going to be nereset, destroyed, nishmedet, nechrevet. There are all kinds of words we have. Nepachet is an interesting word. Vayaminu anshei ninvei belohim. Boom. Anshei ninvei believe in God. Vayikru tzom, vayilbeshu sakim migdolam vead katanam. They call of her fast and they put on sackcloth. From their greatest, from the greatest to the smallest. And this thing even reaches the king. He comes, gets off his seat and takes off his special robe, or his, the, the, the royal clothes. And he covers himself up with a sackcloth and he sits on the dust, or the ashes. Vayazek, mm-hmm. he cries out. Vayomer beninvei mit, vayomer beninvei mitam hamelech ugdolav lemo, and it is said in Ninvei from the king's house and his uh, his uh, his oh. elders. Hadam vabeima abakar vatzon al itamu meuma al yiru umayim alishtu. No one. No one, no animal, no man, no sheep, no cows will taste anything or go out to uh, graze and no water. And they're covered sackcloth, both men and animals. And they cry out to Hashem strongly. They return each man from his evil ways, umina hamas asher vekapehim, and from the the, uh, the the robbery that's in their hands. Mi'odea yeshu v'nicham ha'eloim v'shav necharon apo v'lo noved. And this statement seems to be coming from either the king or the people in general. This was the the word on the street. Who knows? Maybe Hashem will return and uh, forgive. And he will return from his anger and we won't be destroyed. Noved. They use the word noved as opposed to mitapech, right? Which was what the nevuah was. So now we see that they understood at least the noved, that mitapech ke noved. Vayar Elohim et maasehem. 
כי שבו מדרכם הרע, השם saw their actions, that they returned from their evil ways, ואינכם אלוהים על הרעה אשר דיבר לעשות להם, ולא עשה. And he, how do you say ואינכם, how does it translate it? ואינכם. The Pasuk Q is like that. He relented. Hashem relented for the evil that he wanted to do to them, and he didn't do it. Relented. Repented. Relented. Yafe. That's the chapter. Okay, that's the chapter. Uh, the chapter is very short, right? Ten um, psukim. Pretty, pretty coherent when you read it. In other words, it's, it's, it, it works. Um, there are some uh, odd things happening there. But Bigadol, Bigadol, it seems like it really worked. No, Yonah's really good. <laughs> He's a good prophet. He doesn't want to, he doesn't want to, but it works very well. He goes in. What? I see that they don't even wait for the king. Right, yeah, fair. A good point. They don't even wait. You see, there, there are stages also in this, in the repentance, right? Yeah, there are yeah, stages yeah. at first. At first the people, and then the king puts out a xerah, and there are different levels, and first they just do a fast, and then they come back from their evil ways, and then they give back the, the robbery that there was in their hands. It's pretty solid, the sachakol, and, and, and it seems to be saying here that it worked, right? They did a good job. Hashem sees that, they're, they're, that they, were, they did tshuva, and he relents from doing the, it's like it's perfect, this is the way it's supposed to work. This is, this is like, and how do we see that this is the way it's supposed to work? Did the crease lift it? Because we learn, Maseret Ta'anit, and that's what the guy says on the Ta'anit, right? The, the Zaken comes out, and he talks to people, we just learned this, right? He goes out and says, listen people, repent, repent. We'll tear your hearts and not your clothes, like it says, and then Shein vei. Right? That doesn't say that Hashem saw their sackcloth. It says he saw that they were with the tshuva on their ways. Psh, the ultimate tshuva. But I feel like they overdid it. Okay, right, that's David's thing, right? Yeah, with the animal. <laughs> the animal. The animal. Right, they overdid it. They overdid it. So, so here, again, this is what I say when you read this book. What is going on here? It's a so fascinating they, question when you read this chapter. They, like immediately start to repent and uh, fast. Why don't they question you as a problem? Why would they listen? Why, why? Oh, that's a good question. But, 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 but whatever, they, they believe them. Well, they're good. No, it's, it's so, it's so, it's so, it's, it's so evil, the city is so evil, they do so evil deeds. Why would they right. believe them? And it's so, it's also so different than everything we've ever seen <laughs> in, in all the Nevi'im. They're like, okay, Beside them, we'll do tshuva. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And you're saying, uh, and, and David's, David's doing a good, a good, a good, right. It's a good point. They're so bad that they deserve to be destroyed. And then Yonah comes and says, you have 40 days? Oh, 40 days, okay. It, it, it seems almost like there's something big missing. Like yeah, fair. yeah, fair. yeah, fair. So, so, so here, so this is great. So again, we read it on the, on the surface level. On the surface level, it's, everything works very well. But when you dig a little deeper... You sort of move uncomfortably. There's something, just something doesn't click right. It doesn't seem, again, these two points. One is the, just like that. <laughs> and the other is how much, like the animals, come on, what? Maybe, animal maybe fasting, like, do you ever have, see animals, animals fasting? <laughs> I mean, what is this? What is, we've never seen anything like that. I saw when I was preparing, there's like one thing in one of the Sfarim Chitzonim, um, one of the books that didn't go into the Tanakh, and there's an event that, that, that happens. And in Judea, there are some fast, and they, and they, and they decree it on the animals too. But it's not in, our, in, the, in the Tanakh. Nowhere else does this happen here. Like, what? what? It's strange. Okay, yeah. Maybe it's on us, and we self-reflect, and we realize, reading Chumash, reading Tanakh, we are the ones who have such difficulties, and now we see yeah. it so easy. <laughs> now we see it so easy. The only reason it seems exactly. odd... Is because we're the stiff-necked people, and the stories, the book is about us. Exactly. That's why Yon, That's sort of why Yona doesn't that's want exactly to go, right? right? That's what. That's right? what. According I almost to... feel the same anger mm -hmm. that he'd like. Look what's going on here. Yeah. This is the, one of the reasons. Why is it so hard saw. for me? And you do it so easy. Check right. It out. That's what we saw. One and of the reasons he doesn't want to go, it's, right? It's the bad jealousy. When I do, you want? Oh, I wish I could repent like them. I wish they wouldn't repent like that. I told you it doesn't. Right. Yeah. For sure. Uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, it makes exactly. everyone look horrible. Yeah. Yeah, that's what, that was one of the reasons, but one of the major reasons we saw. The mirror is the issue, is that we're so bad at it, and all of a sudden we somebody else do it do well. Yeah, it's even worse. Yeah. Not just they make us look bad, it makes us, we feel bad. I mean, what, what's going so on here? So much so we can't even read about it and think it has to be tricky. <laughs> right, right, we can't take it at face value. I'm pretty sure even the, uh, even the current non-Jewish Christians may have taken this story into their way, you know, 
and see how I see the Jews can't can't yeah, do tshuva. Yeah, yeah. Because they always claim that you know that, that God has already forsaken you. Now we are. I think they might have used this. Possibly, it's it's, it's here, here, it's it's here it's guys. Go go. Right? Yeah, just it could be. It could be. It could be. The. Uh, this one? Yeah, yeah, this one. Yeah. This said there. So, so let, let's let's give a, a basic uh, commentary. Again, I sort of chose pick and choose a little bit of who will follow here in this chapter, um, um, and then we'll. Uh, one thing that the midrash says that Yonah. One of the ideas I don't remember if we brought this in chapter one. When we were going over the reasons why Yonah was running away. One of the ideas on the concepts brought is that Yonah didn't want to become a false prophet. Yonah, they say he was scarred in the past. He gave a prophecy before that that didn't come true. And he had enough. And they called him a false prophet. And he doesn't want to come to Ninveh and say, 40 days, Ninveh Nepach. And then it's not going to be Nepach. It's not enough. So... I believe the Malbi brings that and says, since when did we ever see anything like that? That a prophet doesn't want to be called a false prophet, so he's not doing what Hashem tells him? Eh, it's not easy. But here, on that issue, look at this nice Rashi, who talks about the word Nepachet. Okay? Look at the word, Pasuk Gimel. Alright, he says, Yonah goes, and he says, in Pasuk Gedalet, So look at Rashi. Nepachet nechrevet. Right, so it says to be destroyed. Sort of what it seems. Nechrevet, destroyed. Velo amar nechrevet. Now he says, okay, so why didn't he say nechrevet? If nechrevet is like churban abayit, right? Destroyed, destruction. But why didn't he, so now Rashi says, well, why didn't he say nechrevet? Ki nepechet meshamesh te lishonot. Ra vetov. Im lo yasu tshuva nechrevet. Im yasu tshuva, az nefechet al anshei ninvei kai. In 40 days, Ninveh, not the city, will be destroyed. The people will turn. Turn from evil to good. And in his prophecy here is dual understanding. It could be understood in two different ways. When Yonah goes and says, Either one way or another. It will either be Nepachet, Destroyed, like Mapechat Stom Vamora, that's the word we know, and says Nitzavim, that, that, that Stom and Ra were turned over, destroyed. But there's another way of Nitapech. He turned. He turned from evil to good. So either way, he's right. Ah, right. So he says, a pro- so, so this also gives a very interesting lesson in prophecy, Bichla. That prophecy may, not only here, may have dual meanings in it that has. A, you have to read it carefully. In other words, when Hashem, when Hashem says something will happen, it doesn't necessarily only mean that that's the only option that can happen. We saw this in the Malbim in the very beginning of Bai Cheni. When we saw right, his basic statement of, of Bai Cheni, how this is an opportunity. Prophecies are opportunities. Remember, Malbim says Bai Cheni, remember, Ezra, that it's, it's, it didn't work. Bai Cheni didn't work. Ah, well, how do we see the prophecies of Zachari and others that say this, this is going to be the Geulah? And he says there was an opportunity for it to work. A prophecy isn't a statement that this will definitely happen now. It's an opportunity. This too, I see prophecies, some may, they're a little more um, complex than we usually, than we, we sort of see them. We often see a prophecy as, that's it, it was said, this is what's going to happen. Here, we understand that a prophecy has a dual meaning. In, 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 in the Malbim and Ezra, we see the prophecy is something that's an opportunity, but not necessarily going to happen now. It will happen at some point. But not necessarily now, even though the prophet prophecies it for now. If it doesn't get caught, brought up now, if you don't do what you have to do to access this prophecy or to make it actualize the prophecy, then it's not going to happen now. So prophecies are a little more uh, vague than we, than we sometimes give them credit to. And, and, then, and Rashi says, this is what Yonah says. In other words, Yonah didn't give a prophecy that it will be destroyed. He gave a prophecy that it will either be destroyed or it will be Chosev B'Tshuva. That's the options that stand before you. And the people understood it, according to Rashi. And they said, okay, we have a chance, right? We have a chance. We're going to change it. We're going to change our ways. And that's how it is. That's how Rashi sort of starts off the parak in this, in this interesting way. 
Um, that Hashem didn't say, oh, 40 days or you'll be destroyed. He said, 40 days, there's a, cho- there's a chance. Either, either or. Mm-hmm. And they choose the or. Or the either, whichever one was. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, can I ask something? Sure. Is there any midrash or something explanation about whether the Jews in Eretz Israel were not really happy with what's going on? Because it's between Yonah and Hashem, and they might have no clue about why Yonah has to go to Nineveh to let them do tshuva. I'm just imagining, you know. They have no clue that this is happening, Micha. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm going to the story. They? Yeah, the story has nothing to do with the Jews. You know, there's no. Right, that was one of the questions. Why in the world do we have this book, right? Yonah is in Nineveh. He has done this thing, and people are doing tshuva. Have you heard about it? Well, like his Radak asked, has nothing to do with Amisil. What in the world is this book doing here, right? Remember, that was one of the questions he had generally on Sefer Yonah. But said, let's let's go on here. So let's take a look at the Radak here. Okay. Like the first chapter of Esther. Like, well, uh, with, with that, I think we explained that pretty thoroughly when we learned. Uh, let me get right. this there. So let's take a look at the Radak and Pasuk Gemma. Okay, Pasuk Gemma. So, so the Radak says, remember we talked about Ir Gdola Le Elohim. Ir Gdola Le Elohim. So, what, what does that mean? A great city to God, a, gr- a grand city to God. So the Radak says, Kol davar lagdilo, sumechoto le el, derech agdala, kmo harere el, erze, shalhevet ya. Whenever you want to make something great and grand and huge, then you put Hashem's name in it. So he says, Ir gdola Elohim. It's sort of, <laughs> it's hard for me to say, say, what is the gadol ala? Right, when we say that, yeah, wow, it's huge. And you say, why? Yeah, that's what you do. That's sort of what they're saying. You know, it's huge, like, to God. <laughs> that, that's, what, so that's sort of what he says. Well, but in the Tanah, the Tanah uses it. It uses the word Hashem. Or El, or Ma'afalya means a great darkness. Okay, or Harare El, great mountains. Arze El, huge trees. It's not God's trees. It's using God's name to say huge. That's what it is. So that's what he says. This was a huge city. Oh, a huge city. It doesn't show that they were connected to God. It has nothing to say. It's not, it's not an ethical statement. Or a or theological statement, or a spiritual statement. It's a factual statement that says it was just a very big city. That's the Radak, that's the Pshat of Elohim. We'll see the Ramab if you jump to the Malbi. Okay? <clears throat> so so the, is it like the end of the first Malbi here that you guys see here. So it says, <laughs> That's exactly like the Radak. Or it's on Olomar, or there's another way to explain. This is maybe the reading that we sort of read at first. It is a God, it's a city to God. It's a great city to God. It's important to Hashem. Therefore, He has mercy on it. It was important to Him. It's a, it's a big city with lots of people in it. He has mercy on it. It's a completely different reading. And it feels a completely different nyachas here to saying what's happening here already, already in Paragimel. In other words, up until now, we have no, there's no, uh, we haven't gotten a relationship between Hashem and Ninveh. We don't know what he thinks about Ninveh. We have no idea what he thinks about Ninveh. He just says, go tell them that they're going to be destroyed. So apparently, you know, he's giving them a chance. But here it sounds, chashuva b'ne Elohim. It's important to Hashem. And this obviously feeds into the last Pasuk in Sefer Yonah, where that's pretty much what he says, what Hashem says. The very last Pasuk in uh, You had, had, had uh, mercy upon the Kikayon, this, this tree that was one day here, one day not. And how will I not have mercy on the city that has this amount of people? And the Right? That seems, you know, this Perush in the Malbim is already putting here that there is an inner connection here. Hashem loves His creations. And there's already a whole new uh, uh, level of what's going on. It, was, it sort of answers the question, why is Hashem sending anyone to this? What, what does He care? What does He care about, Ninveh? Hey, we're, it's not us. Uh, we're Amisrael. We're the ones who you care about. What, <laughs> leave them alone. And here suddenly we hear, no, Hashem really cares about other people. Can we say it's like the part of the Assyrian Empire at this time? It's the, it's the Assyrian the, Empire. So it's that, it's the but it was a, civilization. No, but it was also the Malbim who said that was the reason. Not necessarily. I mean, they because, don't contradict. Because of but Hashem, he's, 
Yes, sorry. No, no, continue. I, I interrupt. No, I just wanted to say that um, mm-hmm. Hashem maybe has other plans with the city, like with the, generally the empire. And if the city would be destroyed, it would be like Hashem has the plan to basically um, use them. Use them. But to... he wants to increase their merit by having them do tshuva so that they could be the ones to take over Israel. To punish yeah, Israel. Yeah, yeah. To punish Israel. It sounds like two different reasons. I know they don't conflict with each other necessarily. I understand, I understand. But right, Nahum, but here it seems a more um, um, pure way, right? That the, but Lee Kesher yeah, to what they're the going to do. Right, but, but Lee Kesher to what they're going to do in the future, he has compassion for them. That's what it sounds at this point. For me, the, uh, the Ralph uh, explanation kind of clicks me is because I'm just reminded me of a story when, when we're regarding the Midras of uh, who will receive the Torah. It's like, mm-hmm. oh, why would the Amish just directly receive? Why not? What about the others? And then it goes away. Anyway. So I right. find it very similar to that because like, at times people might think that, oh, it's only them, they're the Bukharim, and we, they don't, Hashem does not care about us. And I, I see here that Hashem do care about others. It's just that there has to be certain differences. But mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. So, the, so, the, so the Malim opens this up, opens that, that direction up, which explains a question we could have about this thing. What do you care about Ashul? Since when Hashem do you care about Ashu? Which again, in prophecies, we do see prophecies to other nations. Mm-hmm. Yirmiyahu, Yechezkel, there, there are times when they turn to other nations. Yirmiyahu has a whole list of them from a certain chapter in Yirmiyahu. I think very Mem or something. Mem, hey, Hashem, uh, he starts talking to the nations straight out, like Begamre, which answers why in the beginning, in the Sefer Yirmiyahu, Mamash Hashem, Hashem says to him, Navi le goyim netatiha. And who's the goyim that is the tatichas? So there's a machloka there, the parshanim. Who exactly he's talking about? One of the perushim, which makes a lot of sense, is also to the nations. You know, it's, Hashem has word uh, talks to the nations. Hashem cares about what's going on in the world. They We're not the only angels. ones. What? They also have guardian angels. They do. In Yoshua, like when the Michel was there. Right, he was ours. Right, of ours. Right, we have Esav. No. So, so let's go back to the radak. Okay, um, let's like uh, finish up the radak. So, so it says ve'aminu. Now, this was the question David asked. Why in the world do they believe Yonah? Like, in Kola Kavod, we have these evil people. What in the world is going on? So the Radak asked the same question. Really, he's saying, this doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. Why would they believe? And he says a fascinating thing. <laughs> he brings a very fract. He says, the sailors were in the city. The that sailors were like, anyway. the sailors were like yeah. telling everyone they're in the right. pub. You, you got to picture it. You got to picture it. No, they didn't get to Tarshish. They went back to the land. Uh, Remember, they go back. Okay. And then, so, so he, the, the Radak offers that they got to Ninveh. They're sitting there. You have to think they're sitting there, you know, in the, in the bars, you drinking their beer. Know. And they're telling the story. You guys don't believe what happens. Don't believe that's him that's the guy oh my gosh he's alive I don't believe it right it's like whoa and then he said you gotta believe it this guy is godly he's saintly he, you know God the storm was on us because of him yeah and it stopped the minute we threw him in like he said it would oh my gosh guy you gotta listen to you, could, you understand how that one? Paro, there's another machlok. Yeah, there's another midrash. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how to do that one. Let's say this yeah, one. This one sure stays that one works. right. That, it doesn't work very well with years. But uh, let's let's stay here for the moment, even though I believe it's connected. In other words, someone who writ- witnessed God's might is is, is coming to say. Now, they don't believe. It does, they wouldn't believe. You know, why would they believe this guy who comes and says something? In some ways, but, I think I, I, I can connect that it's possible because we can remember the story of Oak. Right? Oak was already there when Oh, no you're saying time-wise. Yes. Yeah, the time, the Midrash, the Midrash, yeah. time in Midrash is uh, yeah. sort of like Einstein's theory of relativity, yeah. right? The time and, and space don't always work together. But but I want to go another level here, what the, what, what the Radak is saying here even more. So the Radak, here is, here's a better line. Yonah ran away because he didn't want to say to Ninveh, what would happen to them? What happened, Basof? That's why they believe. In other words, Yonah set his own trap. Yonah didn't want to go to Ninveh. He doesn't want them to do tshuva. He's the one. But what actually allowed them to do tshuva? The fact that he, the fact that he ran away, had the sailors see him, and they're the. In other words, Hashem. Flips the whole thing. You, know, you try to run away. You're running away is what made the prophecy work. <laughs> wow! It's like it's completely taking Yonah and flipping him around the chalutin. You thought you could run away from me. You could run away from the president. Not only did you not, you not only you, not, you allowed it. 
This is what happens. You know, that's, I think, the power of the Radax Perush here. Now, there's no escape. You thought you're going the other way, going west as opposed to east, which is the direction. But so if you come east, and the people who were with you, they're the ones who convinced the invite to come back. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a audio term, Mark Patish. Understand that there's no leaving God's plan for man. In the psuch- man, it will happen. It will come back. You will, it will happen. Yeah. In the Pesukim, he says it's going to Ninveh, I think, right? Mamash tells the sailors Ninveh? Where? No, Mamash not. No, no. No, we don't know where the, the, the sailors go. No, no, no. I'm sorry. How did the sailors know Ninveh? We don't know anything. No, the, they, how did the sailors know that his... They, they didn't know anything. There's, there's no connection. It's, it's completely chance, right? Again, how much is chance here? But it's all chance. There's no, they had no idea. He, they didn't know he was going to Ninveh. They didn't know anything. Right, he just told them, "I'm running away from Hashem." Yeah, That's the only thing he said. Yivrianochi, there's no mention of Ninveh, no mention of what exactly he was he doing. Just he just says, "I'm running away from God." Right? Okay. Now he may have told them the story. There may be more. You could add that on. But because oh, it seems like Ninveh was a big city. The sailors come back. You know, they went to Ninveh. Just they, well they, known, and they like. They could have oh, gone to. Go back there. They, yeah, they could have gone to anywhere. They went to New York. They went to who knows where. They went to a big city. It's a big city. And look, it's the vices, right? I mean, they're. No, and I guess also we're talking about a huge ship with all the nations, as we said. Yeah, it's a, it's a big hodgepodge. It's a major, major place. Now, it's not a port city in Ninveh. It's more inland than... Uh, Syria is more inland than close to the water. Yeah, well, Syria is also on the water, but it, but but Ninveh itself is more inland. It's more the eastern side. But um, but this is, again, so this is Radak. I believe what his statement isn't of just the... It's, it's to say that this is how you yourself formed... The tshuva that is that happens in, in Ninveh. You yourself, Yona, you're the result. You did it. Is there, uh, if I missed, there is any peruge on uh, the time that um, uh, uh, the time it take took uh, from from uh, Yona getting the first prophecy and then he finally gets to Nin- Ninveh? Is it like we don't know how long? It seems to be pretty soon. You know, like, the, 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 the fish spits him out. And so he goes. Three days in the, the fish, but then... Right. So how long between going out of the fish until there? Right. Well, the fish spits him out, right? Right. It spits him out on the Yabasha. We don't know where it is, and then he goes. So, so we don't know. We don't. We don't know. We don't know. It's an interesting, yeah, interesting question like that it may, was, uh, may may affect. It may took some time to spread the rumor. Right? Possibly. Problems. Possibly. Whatever it is, the picture we see here is fascinating, right? This is how they believe. It answers the question. We said, why do they believe him? Well, they believe him because they understand that Yonah is a mystic character. He's some, someone uh, holy. Is it possible that the sailors went far inland so they don't have to experience what they did on the waters? <laughs> That's already <laughs> developing the thing. So it could because, be. I mean, like, it could after, be. after having that experience, you might get, like, some... <laughs> you don't want to go back out there. Might get some fear, yeah, and everything, no. Could be. And everything, and because Ninveh is so far inland, you probably are thinking, well, I'm probably going to not have to worry about that fear at so, all. So that's, that's already, it could be, but that's already, I don't care, in a sense. I don't care what the sailors were thinking in that. It doesn't help our story in that sense, but it's an interesting continuation. Yes? You know, I was just picturing Yona running away from Hashem, but flipping over and making it the way Hashem wants it. And now Hashem is not answering to whatever he's praying, but at the end he answers to him, as I was just explaining when, when I got him. I was just thinking, maybe it's wrong. Maybe is it possible that Hashem was trying to let Yon understand to do true by some easy thing? And when you go to this place, you might be facing certain things and you need to understand when somebody do true by you. Like, you know, to empathize someone, you really need to experience that. Right, you cannot just say uh, I understand you, but unless you experience what the person is going through, so is it possible that he has to experience that? What is he experiencing, you know? Uh, that to do tshuva, he has to do tshuva for running away from Hashem, right? And Hashem so, was so he has to see the tshuva of the of the people of Ninveh. That that allows him to see the tshuva of Ninveh. I'm not sure what what yeah, you're I saying because like he doesn't do tshuva. Yeah, because Yonah didn't do tshuva. Yeah, but he struggled. He struggled to do tshuva, right? Who? Yonah. Yonah does what Hashem told him. You know, it doesn't see, he doesn't seem to be so repentant on what he did. You know, not, nothing in his tefillah says, oh, I'm sorry. It doesn't, doesn't do this. But it's, it's, less, it's less clear. But it is possibly an issue going on here. And maybe Hashem wanted that to happen, and it didn't happen. And we'll see. So, let, let's, Any idea that he was known as a prophet? He may have been known as a prophet. He may have been known. We know he was a prophet beforehand. Yahoo, for example. Everybody knew who yeah, he was. So yeah, it could be. It could be. It could be another explanation, and that helps. But... 
Maybe, maybe. Uh, this Radak is nicer in that sense. Um, so, let's see Pasuk Yud, right? The last chapter. Vayenachem Elohim, ki kol dvarav sh'amar la'arad ibn Adam, b'tnaim lo yashuvu. Aval im yashuvu yislach, v'zo amida im im yudotav yitbarach, k'mo sh'amar b'torah, v'chen amar yirmiyao, rega adaber v'gomer, v'chen amar yechezkel, b'shuv rasham yirzor. Hashem says, the Radak says, this, the fact that Hashem repents, Relents, repents, relents is the right. Relents on what he's there. That's a classic uh, motion of Hashem. He says, I'll do this if you're bad. And if you're good, I'll do, I'll take it away. He says, this is, this is like, this is tshuva. This is the classic sense of tshuva. And the Radak, in this sense, we come to the feeling that it's, it was fine. This is this is like it was it was good chupa. Is that supposed to be? That's how it's supposed to be. Okay, uh, so let's take a look at the Malbim, and then and then we'll go into Chazal. Okay, and their in their judgment of what's happening here, and that's really the fascinating part of how they judge what's happening here. Chazal uh, ask David's question here on the on the, on the, on the animals, and they're like, "What's going on?" And then they have two kivunim in Chazal to understand what's happening here. Okay, so. So uh, let's take a look at the Malbim Pasuk. Gemol, Vayakom Ve'elech Ninvek Yitvar Hashem, Lipnei Shebapam HaRishon, Tziva Sheikra Lehem Divrei Tochacha Sheyashuvu Yamvonotehem, Ubapam HaZeh Tziva Sheinabe Lehem Et Gzar Din Shenigzar Alehem. Haaspek Etzo, Im Yikayem Gama Dibur HaRishon, Ve'yodi Alehem HaYehud Shel Afiha, Ve'gam Yochichem Al Avonotehem. Be'er Sheata Lo Kara Rak Yitvar Hashem, Shedibar Zohata, Shachar Sheodi Alo Agzar Din, Chashav Shelo Toi Lehem, Od Tshuva, Shenitbatev, Dibur HaRishon. So here he has a whole thing. He says, when when Yonah, when Hashem sent Yonah first to Ninveh, the first in Parak Aleph, he told him, Kura Elea. He didn't say you're gonna be destroyed. He, there was no Gzardin. Gzardin being Judgment. not no, the the psak, the the decree, the final decree, right? After the judgment, there's a decree. So he says. That didn't happen. The first time he told them to go talk to them that they're doing bad things and they should do tshuva. Okay, that's how the Malbim reads. And now Hashem said, go and tell them that there's a decree. So Yonah, he didn't know. He said, one second, am I supposed to say, am I supposed to say, uh, like warn them and then say there's a decree or just say there's a decree? What exactly? Am I supposed to like, use what I was the first time again or just say the second thing? Just say the Xardin. Just say the Xardin. And he says, Chashav shelo talina od tshuva. He said, well, so he says, Yonah didn't say anything else besides in 40 days you're going to be destroyed. Again, the Malbim not reading Rashi's dual meaning. He says, you're going to be destroyed. And that's what Yonah said. Yonah did not think that Hashem agrees now for tshuva. This is Yonah's mindset. Yonah's coming and saying it has to be destroyed. It's zel, it's decided, it's over. Which also a little explains Yonah's hafta'ah, Yonah's surprise when Hashem does accept their tshuva. But he thought that that's it. There was, at first Hashem said to Rabbi, but then now apparently it's too late, and now it's just the decree. It's a dollar. So he comes already a different, in a different mindset. So the Malbi sort of has the, the basis here already for what we're going to see in chapter 4, how, how Yonah really gets upset about what's happening. Is, is, um, did Hashem do that on purpose? Have Yona confused? Yeah. It's a good question. Let's wait for chapter four. It's a good question, though, Ezra. Like, in other words, why, why does he leave Yona up in the air? Why doesn't he tell him what, what he's supposed right, to it's do? Like, really, I'm just actually decreeing. Ken, it's, 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 a good, it's, a good, it's a good question. What exactly, what was happening as opposed to what Yona was thinking? What did Hashem want to happen here? So why is it so? From himself. Yeah, so we'll, we'll see there. We'll see in chapter four and we'll understand, we'll try to go into what Yona's problem is, right? What, what's, what's his uh, thing? Um... <clears throat> oh, <laughs> look at chapter four. Look at look at this page on, on four that continues here. Umashe shal shayalo liyona. I can see he's talking about the 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 the. the uh, a barbanel. Uh, he plays off the barbanel a lot, the, uh, the Malbim here. And what he asked, the barbanel, that Yonah should have said that it should be nefachet im lo yashuvu b'tshuva. He should have said that it will, it will be destroyed if they don't do tshuva. Because that's not a kushia. Because they knew already from, from what, that, that when the Navi comes to tell you, that means that there's a possibility that you could do tshuva. That's what he says. Ube'emet, he says, but really, 
it was worthy, and then the, the third line here in Dalet. Really, Yona should have told them that they can do tshuva. Right, well, you don't want them to do two, was the thing. Exactly what he says. Who lo milet, he didn't do it. Velo yichriz. Rak begzera sheba ala vedibur asheni. He only said the decree. He didn't say the opportunity to do tshuva. Mipnei shayaret sonno sheitu velo yasu tshuva. He wanted them to make a mistake and not do tshuva. Right, so we're deepening Yonah's uh, 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 anger yeah, here. In other words, an anger for Yonah. Right. Was so. that strike two on Yonah? <laughs> or strike three? I don't know. They may be strike five already. But this is, this is Yonah here is, 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 is again, in a sense, is he doing Ritzvah Hashem or not? Wow. Mm. So the Malbim is already knocking Yonah off here. In other words, we're saying, and now I'll bring another one. It doesn't say it here. Right? He goes in. The day, it's three, he's supposed to call in Ninveh for three days. Where does he go in? in? Right inside for one. One day. One day. Three to get more attention, he, obviously. But he doesn't go into everywhere. He just does one day. Now, but I, if I, as I tell you, go tell the Beit Midrash that there's uh, the food is now. So you could go around the Beit Midrash telling everyone there's food. You could walk in to the beginning and say, hey, guys, there's food, and turn around and leave. Did you do what I asked you to do? Uh, Did you really do what I asked you to do? Okay, the, the, the first, first one, the first one, yes, the second one. I understand. So I'm saying you're not. This is, I, I think, it, it maybe the pshat of what's happening here. It says, it says day, they, they, they tell us it's a malach shloshet yamim, and he goes in malach yom echad. I did what you said, Hashem. I did. So, now, we, we, there's another. Here we see again, and here the Malbim saying now again, Yona did Hashem what Hashem wants. That first it seems like he did. But suddenly we're we're hearing breaks in his uh, in his doing the, the actual thing. You know, Yonah did not give up. Let's put it like this. And was, he's coerced. He understands he can't run away. But how much do you make me do it? Again, I'm talking to you again, father and child, right? In this sense, and the child, the father makes the child do it, so the child does it. Clean your room. Okay, I'll clean my room. Exactly. Everything, so everything, exactly. Under exactly. everything under the bed, okay. everything, right? It's like, oh, the clean of the room is clean. And as we're seeing, Yonah is not really in. bending toward to Hashem. He's doing, he's being coerced by Hashem yeah. to do what Hashem wants, but he's not there. And again, the, the anger that's simmering under the surface is going to break out in chapter 4, but already we can feel it. I can feel there's something going on here. It's chapter 3, which looks ideal in a sense. Yona goes, does what Hashem does, and everything's okay. Uh-uh. He's not exactly doing what Hashem says. We already have two breaks already that we're learning here. Tov. Um, let's go on here. Vayit kasu. So uh, they, they cover themselves in sacks, right? Gam bekisu asak yichlelu gam abeima v'osif alef tfila. So besides covering themselves in sacks, they, they daven, sheikru el Elohim bechoska, תשובה, שישובו איש מדרכו הרע מן החמאס. כי על החמאס אין מועיל לווידוי והחרטה. עד שישיב את החמאס הנמצא בכפיו אל בעליו. It's not enough, it just says we know, and he'll call תשובה, right? It's not enough, if you steal something, you can't just daven about it, you have to give it back. So there's an addition here, and there's שלבים. They cover in sackcloth, and then they ask for forgiveness, and then they have to give back the חמאס, that's בכפיהם. They're good, in other words, saying, at the moment, the תשובה looks good. מי יודע ישוב? שכל אחד נהו... טוב, זה לא מספיק חשוב. רובין? אני חושב שרובין. רובין. טוב. טוב. אז בואו נראה את פסוק י', אוקיי? זה הראשון פסוק כאן, במערבים רגע. והיה רלוים את מעשיהם, רצונו לומר שתחילה ששבו אנשי נינווה היה רק חרטה. At first, they just had חרטה, they just... We're sorry. But they didn't really do the masim. After the king came, these are the shlavim, these are the stages of the tshuva. After the king said, He saw their actions. Before they actually gave back the, the money. ולכן וינחם אלוהים על הרע, והגם שלא שבו רק על חטא הגזל, ולא על עבודה זרה. Remember the Radak saying there was no עבודה זרה there? So the Malbim says, uh-uh, there was serious עבודה זרה there. So, בכל זאת, אחר שגזר דין נחתם על הגזל, וזה תקנו, לא עשה את הרע. So here the Malbim is also opening up another פתח. He says, there was a lot of evils in, uh, in uh, Ninveh. They were 
idol worshippers. They were all kinds of things. The, uh, the, 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 the gezel, the robbery, they gave back. They didn't do tshuva on the Vodazara. But since most destruction happens from gezel, right? Stone, Dora Mabul, uh, the, the, the generation of the flood. Here, it's the, the evil. We talked about this last lesson, right? In Yoshua this morning. Talk about this, this, this today, this morning. In the kings, right? Though that's uh, the Anakim, right? That's what that's what the Bnei Elohim, the, the, that's what the, that's what the, oh. the Nephilim did, right? The, the taking, the Gezel. That Hashem says that doesn't exist. That cannot exist here. He takes that away. He destroys that. So he says, so even though they weren't doing Chuba of Adazara, they did Chuba on Gezel, so it's enough. It's enough to, to, to annul the decree. But here the Malbim throws out the opportunity or the hearing that the tshuva wasn't 100%. The tshuva didn't include everything. There are other things to do tshuva on that they didn't do. That opens up the opportunity to understand that maybe there's something lacking here. And then we're going to see Yonah's uh, a reaction. Yeah. Yeah. What is Malbim's, the Malbim's pasuk or words that says it wasn't complete? He says they didn't do chuvan of the zara. But what 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 is where is it from the psukim? He just says they don't do chuvan of the zara. No, no. It says al chamas shel kikapem. It says this is what they did chuvan for for the chabas. Well, the album says they're, they're an idol worshiping city. Okay. Where where is the rest of the chuvan? Again, again, exactly why the radak said they were good. They didn't work, serve idols. In other words, they they they, they read exactly the afuch exactly. They read the same the same absence absence exactly of of, of idol idolatry. To read Afuch. Okay. okay, this is interesting again, as we always say, commentary is fascinating in that in that way. Bisseder. This is a chapter, we saw the different Perushim, we saw different Kibunim happening already. Now let's open up Chazal, who straight out and flat out asked the question of what is this chuba? Was this real chuba or not real chuba? And this is the question that really we have to have on the backdrop of Paragdal, where Yonah gets really, really mad. Okay, so maybe just to read the first first couple psukim of of Perak Dalit, just to understand why we would even assume otherwise. So it starts by Itpalele Adunai, Vayomar, Ana Adunai, Halozed Vari Adeyotir Admati. This is what I said when we I was still in my land in Eretz Yisrael when I got my prophecy the first time this is why I got up and ran away from Tarshish because I knew you were good generous forgiving that's why I ran away <laughs> <laughs> Which is a fascinating Flipping statement, it. right? It's like, I knew well, how good you were. Yeah, like, excuse me? It's a, it, need, it needs understanding. Obviously needs understanding. Right. Be'ezrat Hashem, next week we'll go into this. But just to see, Yonah's up. Yonah says, God, you're too good. You're too good. Here. Right? You're too good. It's not, it's, not, it's not what I want. It's not what I want. So, so and, I mean, what, what in the world does that mean? We dive in this every day, the social midot chirachamim. That's the key. That's the love. Mean? But Yonah says, no, I don't like it. I knew you were that kind of God. That's why I didn't want to do this. Like, what in the world? Do, right, what in the world is going on here? <laughs> Too friendly. Midat hadin. It is midat hadin. Ah. So here, just, just before we go on again, this is all next week. It makes you have to come back. Um, what, what word is missing here? Hashem, Hashem, El Rachum Vechanun. Switched over here. Erech Apayim Rav Chesed. Viemet. Is that there? Viemet. Is that there? No. No. But it's Rachum Vechanun Rachum Okay, Chanun Rachum it says. Right, interesting. But it doesn't have a met. Rav Chesed, he stops at Rav Chesed, right? Vinicham Alara. Wow. Rav Chesed, Vinicham Alara. Not only that, I'll give you another one. If you guys look in Perak Aleph, right? We said it's a, it's a, it's a negative, right? Perak Aleph and Perak Gimel. What's his name? True with Emet. Yonah ben Amitai. He means Perak Gimel. Who's missing? Amitai. Amitai. There's no Emet in uh, chapters Gimel and Dalet. Yonah has an issue with Emet. This is something that's a problem here. Okay, now what's emet? Compassion, in its mahut, in its essence, not is not emet. Compassion is a, well, you could say it's emet, but a different kind of emet. 
But <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, it makes it more so complex. Like yeah, fair. And met, though, isn't it? So Hashem, in the Shosla Midot Shirachamim, Emet is there. Truth is part of the Shosla Midot Shirachamim. Yonah doesn't see it. Yonah is an issue here. And possibly, possibly, there's a problem with this tshuva. In other words, Hashem Yonah, they're, they're, I'll say, there are people who say that Yonah is an issue with tshuva. He, his fight is against the essence of tshuva. He says tshuva isn't truth. And I'm a truth. I believe in truth and not in tshuva. Eh, hard to say as the Torah is full with the idea of tshuva. But what kind of tshuva, that, that may be more, more, uh, Things are getting more thing. easy. Yeah, fair. What kind of tshuva do you accept? That may be the issue happening here. Let's take a look at Chazal here, okay? Chazal, the Yushalmi and the Bavli have a machloket. Or the Yushalmi and the uh, Midrashim have a machloket on whether the tshuva was good or not. So let's take a look at the Yushalmi. Amar Abin Shimon ben Lekish. Tshuva shel rimiyut asu anche tu nimve. It was a cheating tshuva. If you can see any more, any more clear, he says rimiyut. Rimiyut, like ramaut, it was a cheating tshuva. Well, let's take a look. Masu. Rabbi Chona b'shem Rabbi Shimon bar Chalafta. They took the animals and they took the calves and they locked them inside and they put the mothers outside. The, the younger the horses inside and the, and the ones outside, the mothers outside. These were crying inside and these were crying outside. Amrin. En let mitrachim alinan, linan merach min aleon. If you don't forgive us, if you don't have compassion on us, we're not going to have compassion on them. They'll die. That's why they didn't feed the animals. <laughs> One second. The animals as hostage? This is, that's what they do. They hold the animals as hostage and they say to Hashem, if you forgive us, we'll forgive them. If you don't have mercy on us, we won't have mercy on them. In other words, let's, let's arm wrestle here. You, cool. We're gonna use the animals sure. as hostage. Like that's gonna work with the shit. One second, well, it works. <laughs> it works. But uh, but what he's saying, this is a hostile tshuva. <laughs> this is not repentance. This is demanding. This is using. This is holding as hostages. This is using uh, terror. I don't know what it is. This is right. Uh, this is like. It's, 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 it's a weird, weird situation here. But it doesn't seem that they're very repentant. In what they're doing, according to this idea, this 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 concept. We'll have to again. We'll go into this in a second. But the basis he's saying they were not. And again, playing on David's animals here, right? He says they used the animals. They didn't make them. You know, the the starving of the animals here was a ploy. Okay, it wasn't have the animals fast like the people fast because we're all in trouble. No, we have the animals fast to come to Hashem and say. It's us or them. We're all going down with the ship. If you don't forgive them, you don't forgive us, we won't forgive them or we won't allow them. You don't have compassion for us, we won't have compassion. Okay, it's a different reading of what's happening with the animals here, which makes more sense in that there's something going on with these animals. Whether this is exactly what it is or not, it, it opens up a whole new realm of possibilities of what exactly was going on with that. So he goes on. There's another perush here. Ve'ashuvu ish midarko arau min hachamas asher bekepehem amar Rabbi Yochanan ma she'ah bekaf yedem yechziru ma she'ah b'shida teva u'migdal lo yechziru. He says, what was in their hands, they gave back. What was in the the closet, the safes, that they didn't give back. They gave back. But right, it says, what, it says why, why does he say hachamas asher bekepehem? That was in their hands. Hachamas. What do you have to say in their hands? Hamas. In the beam of the building. Oh, that's, that's the next. That's the next one. That's the next one. What? I'm sorry. Only the one which was visible was given out. Right. They they gave that back. But whatever they had, they hid. They're ready in their bank account in Switzerland. That they didn't give back. That that stays by them. You know, there are two perushim. Rabbi three actually. Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel, Rabbi Chuna ben Shem, Rabbi Shimon ben Chalafta, Rabbi Yochanan. All of them seem to be saying that what was happening here was not your everyday tshuva. Was not what we see in the present in the in the in the pshat of the psukim that they did tshuva. No, there were things going on here. It was either not mamash, and I'll add the malbim here that they didn't do tshuva on avodah zarah, 
and we'll throw in that they were they were trying to strong strong arm Hashem into forcing him to to. Say, this is not the classic tshuva. Why is Hashem oh, oh, oh. Well, first of all, we've already convinced Ezra that we understand Yonah now, right? Uh-huh. Now we can understand Yonah a little better, right? Yonah says, it's ramaut. It's trickery. It's not real. This isn't repentance. And you're forgiving them? No. I knew this would happen. <laughs> this is what Yonah says, right? In chapter 4, we just saw. I knew this would happen. You are too soft. Too, you're willing to take us. It's not fair. Is that why he doesn't say emits? It's not fair. Possibly. Possibly. This is not, it's tshuva, but it's not tshuva shal emet. And it's not fair. Because with Am Yisrael, you demand real tshuva. You're always on their case. That what you're doing isn't enough. And they bring the sacrifices, and you get mad at them. And then they do this, but it's not enough. And here it seems to be that this is Yonah's issue going on here. You know, that it's not fair. The going, you're letting them off easy. And Am Yisrael, you demand so much of that. Well, what Am Yisrael is Hashem's people. What? Am Yisrael is Hashem's people, ah. so they do have so, a so, so, so hold this thought again. This is uh, this chapter 4. Oh, there's so much we're going to have to do next week. But this is chapter 4. In other words, so, so what is the difference? And why? what's Hashem's answer to Yonah? Or what is the answer to this statement, which <laughs> sounds pretty powerful? In other words, Yonah is saying, it's, it's a ramaut. It's not real tshuva. It's a double standard. It's not fair. It doesn't make sense. Why with them you're being Rahman and with us you're being so harsh? It's, good, it's, a good, it's a good question here. It's a good question. And again, on the basis that the tshuva wasn't real. The Yerushalmi. Okay, the Yerushalmi's explanation again, we saw the mouth. Um, possibly, in the Pasuk in Yoel, as you see, V'gamatanu Mashem shavu edai bechol levavchem u'betzom u'vivchi u'bimispeh, it says Yoel, come back to me with all your hearts in fasting, in crying, and in, in uh, sped, you know, crying out. Rip your hearts and not your clothes. I don't care about your sackcloth. Okay, I want your hearts ripped open. That's what I'm looking for, Hashem says to them. That's what I'm, I need. That's what He says to us. Did they rip their hearts open? They're going here? They call out strongly, but that, how did the Midrash say call out strongly? You forget, <laughs> it's, it's us or them, right? It's, it's, uh, having no hostage, the animals. Because she gave things back. In other words, it was, they, they, this is, this is uh, it's not what's expected of us, but this is all one kivun in Chazav. Chazav, another kivun. Let's take a look. In the al I brought it from here. Okay? The Yom Shlishi, they all did real tshuva. Even the avedot, even the missing objects that they found all over the place, they searched and returned them to their owners. So where is this from? This is... Yal Kuchimoni. No, yeah, no, a midrash. What, a midrash. Midrash, midrash, yeah. Not Bavli. Midrash. No, no, the Bavli so brings others, but the Bavli is strength in the Mishnah. The Mishnah, uh-huh. which said what the way I started off with using Ninve as the ultimate uh, example, example of Chuva, okay. right? That, that's what you brought. Okay. It wouldn't be uh, if you had read this in the Yerushalmi. I'm not yeah. sure you would bring right, right the people of Ninve. If you want to try to <laughs> convince people to, to do Chuva, it, it wouldn't work. Example. Right, exactly. So here, well, like example, this, is no, this is not how you're supposed to do it. Like right, and you, know, you wouldn't bring it. You wouldn't bring it if you thought this was what was happening there. But here, but there's another. Uh, and you see, the Alkut here brings um, brings uh, a different opinion of Chazal again, a, a different understanding of what happened. So first of all, they gave back all the avedot. Why is this important to understand? Because goyim don't have to give back avedot. A Jew doesn't have to bring back an avedot to a goy. You said there, it's achicha. It is a lifnim mishurat adin. The basic understanding, when you learn Baba Metziah, it's fascinating in the, the, the chapter that, that talks elu mitziot. The basic understanding is finders, keepers, losers, weepers. In other words, it dropped. It's not your, why is it yours? 
you, you left it somewhere. Why is it still yours? In what way is it still yours? It's a, it's a fascinating well, question who on... Who cares about your own shoes as a reference? No, on ownership. <laughs> what does ownership mean? You know, is ownership... What, what, what is it? Le- what it's, a legal sta- it's a legal status? Or is it... What are you, it's a, by you. It's yours. You left in the sun for two days. It's out there in the sun. Why, it's yours still? What is it still yours for? In other words, it's, it's a real question. It's a question that, that, that one second, at, at the basis of Hashavat Veda, that really Hashavat Veda is seen as Lifnim Shurat Adin. The whole din of, shura, of, of, of Hashavat Veda comes from the fact that it's Achicha. He's your brother. And you have to give back to your brother. Of the brother, you give back to your brother. You act differently than you do, and that's why you don't have to give it back to a goy. The same way you can give interest to a goy. Right? When, you, when you, someone lends money, you can give it to a goy. Interest. Why? Now, interest isn't bad. Both sides want the interest. Right? You're not forcing someone to take something with it. He needs the money right now. You say, I want to make money on my money. Is there something inherently wrong with that? No. Everyone agrees. It's not, I didn't, there's nothing shady. There's nothing big. I'm saying, listen, you need 100,000 checks. I'll start a business. I have 100,000 checks. Why should I give it to you for free? Like, why should I give my good money to you for free? I'm going to make something out of it. It makes a lot of sense. It says the Ramban, he explains, he says, but with your brother, you better not give with interest. You're making money off your brother. He's in, in, a, har, in a harsh state. Your brother, you give it. But it's, 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 it's harig, it's not regular. In other words, it's compassionate. You only do that to your brother. He says, Ashavat Eveda is the same thing. It's lost. What do you mean give it to him? Why should you give it back to him? It's yours. He lost it. It's finished. So the din is there. So here they have the Goyim giving back Ashavat Eveda. It's doing, seeing themselves as brothers, seeing themselves as, as a connection, something Never than, than usual. Yes, Ezra. So basically, when it comes to a Jew, it's different when it comes to a Jew, Goy versus Goy or Jew and Goy. For sure. For sure. They don't have the Dina Shabbat Veda. It may be nice. They can do it. It's, it's a nice thing to do, but they, uh, there's no chova. Objects you have to return to your You brother. have to do to your brother. It says in, 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 uh, in the Psukim, in Devarim, it says it time after time. Achicha, achicha, achicha. So, you have to give back because he's your brother. That's why you do it. Ami Amisel is your brother. That's why right. you do it. Um, so, so if, if, if I see a book, um, uh, whatever, whatever book that says Joe Schmo in it, it's n- I know it's not Jewish, I could just keep it without... You could. Or you could do Lifni Mishra Tadin. You could say, I'm going to do it anyway and do a Kiddush Hashem. Okay. There's, there are other aspects going on here. For Dina Shabbat Aveda, you don't have to. But if you want to do a Kiddush Hashem, then maybe a good idea to do. Yeah. Um, during this time, were they aware about Noahide laws? The laws of Noah? I don't know how prevalent it was. They, they, they knew. Hashem expects them to do Gezel, in other words. They, like, he's going to destroy them because they don't do Gezel, at least. Because according to Noahide laws, I think what uh, they were doing was acceptable. Uh, I mean, well, they, however, they stole. You're not allowed to steal. No, I understand. However, what uh, Yonah was not happy, I'm just trying to, uh, you know, make an understanding. Although what Yona understood was exactly what I would feel, but nevertheless there is what we call Noahide law. And here Rambam, I just saw Rambam explanation on this one, he said one of the Noahide laws was just to make sure that the society was with laws and justice. Mean, right. So with laws and justice, when they repent, although it's not sincere, but somewhere, somehow the robbery that we're talking about was stopped. So that means there was a little bit of laws and justice over there. So, so you're giving a little bit of a myth. You're saying there was a little bit of, 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 of justice in the not destruction. I understand. The Noahide law is always about that. It's a set of laws and it's the simplest way, not what we are doing. So I, I mean, if, if that was understood in that age, in that era, I think it just makes sense. It justifies why Hashem would have mercy on them. You know, they did what they had to do. They did the minimum. It could be, it could be that that's built into it. But let's go on here and see how, just how stringent they were. Even the stones that they stole and put in the palace, they destroyed the whole palace and took the stones to give back. In, in, in the fields that they planted, things that were stolen, they pulled them out by the roots and gave them back to their Baalim. And then the clothes that, were, that, were, that were put in the clothes, already made clothes, they, they ripped open the clothes and gave back the things they, that, that they had used that were, that were stolen. They accepted all the Jews. A little connected to what you just said, uh, um, 
Asher, that they accepted the, the Mishpah and the Tzedakah. And every Avera they did, they did Tshuva and they accepted the punishment that they should get. Even if he found in his house that he rented, he found the treasure that he thought it was his, now he gives it back to the other one. He found a treasure in the house, even though it's 35 generations beforehand that he bought it, they found the, the inheritor for that family and he gave it back. Crazy tshuva. Now, to read this midrash, again, offhand at first, seems to be, wow, this is like par excellence. This isn't just tshuva, this is tshuva par excellence. The only question, even in this tshuva, that when you hear, it's a little overdoing things, isn't it? Not only that, there's a famous um, halacha. It's called Takanat Shavim. That is, if I took a beam of yours and I made a house out of it, I, I don't have to break my whole house to give you back the beam. I have to pay you for it or give you another beam. But I don't have to give you back this beam. Because... No one's going to do that. <laughs> I, want, I want it to happen. Takanata Shavim is to be able for people to give back something. I, ca I can't do that. And therefore, it's, it's okay. Even though Gezel, Stamkach, I have to give back the thing I actually stole, there's a ghoul to do it. All the examples they bring here, the stone, the, the, the thing, the patch and the clothes, they're all things that aren't halachic. So one could say, again, you could say, wow, it's even more than halachic. Halacha doesn't demand this and they did more. Or you could say, they were overdoing it, just like they made their animals fast. They overdid it. There's something, the goyim overdo things. They don't get it. This is already cruel to the owner. There's a cruelty happening. It's cruel to the animals to make them think. It's cruel to the owner to make him break his whole house and give them a brick back. They're, they don't know how to do tshuva. They're cruel in their tshuva. And maybe that's what Yonah's. Upset about. So I'm saying even the Bavli that at first, or the, the Midrash here, that seems, that possibly appears to say that they did Juba correctly, and that's what the Pshat seems to be, that they did Juba correctly. Even here, you could hear overtones or undertones, I don't know exactly how you hear it, of when you do things in the extreme, it comes out to be cruel. They're cruel here. And everything they're doing here is what cruel. What they do is they go from one extreme to the other extreme. Right, but the other that's extreme... What I mean, like, Exactly, right? Yeah, so they nepachet. They turn around, but they turn around too far. And Yonah says, "Look at them, Hashem. Look at them. Even when they do this tshuva, they don't do the tshuva k'mo shetzarich. They're lo ra'ui. It's not matim for them to be, for them to be saved, for them to be forgiven. Because they're still following the pagan god. Maybe they have the custom." Well, well, this is this they're doing. They didn't. In other words, they stole all the time. This is like they're trying to fix it, but even the fixing it comes cruel when you don't do it correctly. So, so, so here we have chapter chapter three um, presented to us in all its splendor and glory. That again is fascinating. That on first glance seems like the ultimate chuva parak, but as you delve in deeper, there are cracks. We see cracks. And even, in, and even when Chazal seem to be saying they're doing something good, there's a crack in that also. How does the Yerushalmi and the Malbim, how do they deal with the Mishnah that says Tshuva was perfect? They, they must have. Uh, first of all, they could not agree. They're allowed to not agree. Okay, there, uh, that's the basic thing. And was, and was, there's definitely a reading here that they did Tshuva. I mean, it's not... It's not <laughs> The, 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 you have to ask them, the, the Yushalmi how they did. They did the perfect tshuva, and then it's accepted. It's, that's the pshat of what's happening. The Midrashim make it absurd. They take it to an absurd in both ways, and they're feeling, they're feeling it. They're feeling there's something weird here. There's something in the quickness. There's something in the animals. No, and the fact that Yonah goes nuts. In other words, what, who, how are we going to explain Yonah getting so angry, right? And they did tshuva. What are you, what's your problem, man? They did tshuva. <laughs> so in other words, they're, they're helping Yonah. They're trying, helping us, the readers, figure out what's wrong with Yonah, why he gets so upset. Then, of course, the question goes to Hashem. That's really, now the question sort of moves from Yonah to Hashem. Okay, Hashem, why did you forget that? Mm -hmm. If all this is correct, and this is all right, 
then why did you forgive them, Hashem? It wasn't a real tshuva. It was a fake tshuva or an overblown tshuva or a tshuva that they caused cruelty in the other sense or they didn't do it with the... So why do you forgive them? This back to the Malbim Aleph. That he needed them for, for this. No, no. So we're going to have to go more than that. I hope. I hope. Thanks. Uh, so Be'ezrat Hashem next week, we're going to have to answer these questions, both on Yonah's side and Hashem's side. What's going on? And why, And how is this going to happen through the story of the, the, the Kikayon and the worm, the Sukkah, and, uh-huh. and what happens there? That's, that's the story that happens in chapter 4. Okay, How the story there sort of leads us to these understandings um, what exactly is, is the point of this whole book in, in that mm-hmm. sense? Um, what is Yonah thinking and what does it teach us, Bika, which is always what we're trying to learn in that Torah? Oh, yeah.